This lesson is 13.1, Experimental and Theoretical Probability. We're going to talk about these two probabilities. One, experimental means experiment. You are actually doing an event to see how many times an outcome happens. And then theoretical probability, you're just figuring out what should happen, what is likely, what should be likely if I do an event. Okay, so the first part, experimental probability is the ratio, get my highlighter here, it's the number of times an event happens over the number of times the experiment is done. So a good example would be what is mentioned below here. Basketball player has scored 19 times but has shot 28 times. He's actually doing the event. The experimental probability of the player scoring is the probability, so P, that means probability. You'll see that a lot in this chapter. So the probability that the player will score is 19 out of 28. So that's 0.68 or converted into a percent is 68%. That does not mean every single time he plays a game that he's going to be 68% from the field. That just means in that specific experiment, when he shot 28 times, he scored 19. So here are some examples of that. A quality control inspector samples 500 LCD monitors and finds defects in three of them. What is the experimental probability that a monitor selected at random will have a defect? Okay, so if you look back to that ratio, the total amount in the event, so if there are 500 TVs or monitors, how many will be defective? They told us that three of them will be defective. If you convert that into a decimal, you're going to get 0 0.006, convert that into a percent, and it's 0.6%, so it's very few LCD monitors will be defective. But if a company makes, so Part B, if they make 15,240 monitors in a month, how many are likely to have a defect? So 0 0.6 doesn't seem like a lot, but when you're making more, we want to figure out how many will be defective. So there are two ways you could do this. You could set up a proportion. If three are defective out of 500, how many are defective out of 15,240? Then you would cross multiply and divide, and you'd get your answer. But another quick way you could do this, since you've already calculated the percent, 15,240 times the decimal percent, so 0 0.006, is going to give you your answer. So if you plug that into your calculator, 15,240 times 0 0.006, you're going to get 91.44. So approximately 91 LCD monitors will be defective. This is experimental probability. And we're going to skip this one since we just practiced. Moving on to theoretical probability. This is, let me get my highlighter again, the number of favorable outcomes over the number of possible outcomes. So here, we're not actually doing an experiment. We're just thinking, okay, in theory, what should the probability be? And a perfect example of this would be flipping a coin. There's heads, there's tails. You have a 50% chance of flipping heads. You have a 50% chance of flipping tails. So probability of heads, probability of flipping heads would be one half or 0.5 or 50%. So the difference between experimental and theoretical, experimental would be, so experimental probability, if I were to take this event and do an experiment, say I flip it four times and I get heads the first time, I get heads the second time, I get heads the third time, and I get heads the fourth time. That does not mean that every time I flip a coin, I'm going to get heads. In that experiment, it was a 100% chance of getting heads. But in theory, I should get heads just 50% of the time. So that is the difference between the two. So here's an example of theoretical probability. What's the probability of rolling numbers that add to 7 when rolling two standard number cubes? So the best thing to do here would probably be make a grid. Mine is going to be really ugly because I'm drawing on a screen. Let's see here.
Right. Good enough. So one number cube, my options of rolling would be one, two, three, four, five, and six. The other number cube, same thing. I could roll a one, a two, a three, a four, a five, and a six. So what's the theoretical probability that the two die would add to seven? Well, I'm going to go through here, and I'm going to put a check mark everywhere I see seven as a sum. Roll a one and a six, that would give me seven. Roll a two and a five, three and a four, four and a three, five and a two, one and a six. Everything else would give me less than seven or greater than seven. So how many options, how many possibilities do I have? Well, I have six times six. There are 36 squares there. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Six out of 36 possibilities would give me a sum of seven. So my theoretical probability would be one sixth. And then if we ask you to give us a decimal, 0.17 if I were to round. So 17% chance that my sum of the two die would be seven, or would be 17%. This is theoretical. That doesn't mean it's definitely going to work out that way if you were to do it. But in theory, we should have that happen 17% of the time. Okay, so last thing, using probability of an event and its complement. A jar contains 10 red marbles, 8 green marbles, 5 blue marbles, and 6 white marbles. What's the probability that a randomly selected marble is not green? So one way you could do this is you could already just figure out, okay, how many marbles aren't green? Or complement, that means let's figure out how many marbles are green. What's the probability of pulling a green? So 10, 8, and 5, and 6. So 10 plus 8, 18 plus 5, 23 plus 6, 29. I have 29 marbles. How many are green? Eight are green. So I have an eight in 29 chance of pulling a green marble. But it's asking, what is the probability that a randomly selected marble is not green? Okay, so P, probability of green. I'm gonna run out of room here. Room here. What's the probability of it not being green? So you could go through again and do 29 as your total. How many aren't green? Well, 10 are red, 5 are blue, so that's 15. 6 are white, 21. 21 are not green. So that would be the complement of something. Green happens, what, what's, the, what's the complement of green being pulled? Well, it would be green not being pulled, so 21 out of 29. One way you could do this is just figure out, okay, if there are a total of 29, Eight are green, so the leftovers are not green, and that would be 21 out of 29. That is the complement. Um, another way you could look at it real quick is just subtract it from 1, because those together, if you think about it, 8 over 29 plus 21 over 29 gives me 29 over 29. So an event and its complement will always equal 1. So if I do 1 minus the complement 8 over 29 which is pulling green you're going to get 21 over 29 and that is it